The disappearance of Heather Elvis has probably changed the face of missing persons investigations forever, thanks in large part to social media. Facts, speculation, even lies are getting out there faster than law enforcement can investigate them. In this case, it's also resulted in unauthorized evidence leaks and even some conducting their own parallel investigations. That's the type of information that you don't want out there. It takes the case. Everybody knows what's in that report. That means whoever's listening to that report, whether they had any involvement or not, that means who's responsible for it knows what's in that report. Lieutenant Chip Squire's not happy with what social media has done to this investigation. It's been a major interruption, even setback in their efforts to resolve the case. We've tried to keep information that we didn't want um, out there that would hinder the prosecution of the case or hinder our investigation. But the exposure this case has gotten has been both a blessing but it's also been a real curse to this investigation, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it has. There have also been a few other distractions in this case, including the arrest of one of Terry Elvis's closest friends and the organizer of those searches, fundraising efforts, and social media efforts to find Heather. As a friend of a father that's missing a 20-year-old daughter, you do what you have to do sometimes. Uh, did I do it I intentionally say, I'm going to break a law? No, sir. He reached out to uh, a witness in the case and basically tried to conduct his parallel investigation with ours. Um, and that, in doing that, it interfered with our investigation. So many people were, were not willing to come forward and talk to the police, but they'd come tell me. And I'd say, well, here, please, just call the tip line. Come, come forward and, you know, tell the police this. No, we don't want to get involved. I mean, people would actually physically back their cars up the street so I couldn't get their license plate number. At a time like this, you really do find out who your friends are. Terry Elvis calls Barrett one of his most trusted and one who has sacrificed a lot. You seem unfazed by what has happened to you over the past month. Uh, you're just moving on as if, you know what, this train ain't stopping. What's, what's going on? The Elvis family's still suffering. And, you know, it it's, 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 hits me as a personal failure to, as a team, as a group, as a community, that this has not been taken care of, that this justice has not been served. As we prepare to enter month three of the search for Heather Elvis, Terry has lost patience and is losing confidence in those charged with finding his daughter. Are you not convinced they're doing everything in their power the right way to find your daughter. You know, I, I want to answer that the correct way as a father and seeing it day in and day out. I'll tell you they're doing their job, but not to the best of their ability because I haven't seen results and it's been 47 days. As for Terry pointing fingers at the man whose phone calls may have been the last Heather ever received. It won't stop until we find Heather. It's not going to stop. If I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. I really am. But if it brings my daughter back, I'm going to hurt them. The good, the bad, and the ugly. That's what social media will likely be attracting in every missing persons case from here forward. Horry County Police admit they will have to take much greater care in the future when it comes to what they release and how they release it. In the meantime, their policy will always be zero tolerance when it comes to anyone interfering with bringing victims like Heather Elvis home. In the studio, I'm David Clue, WMBF News.